since we've got Trent up you know, later, I mean, you've got this relationship with him that goes back to when he was in high school, you were at SFA, you know, to see maybe as far as he's come and maybe you know, that he stuck around you know, through some rough times at Illinois and to be here, kind of what does that maybe mean for, you know, to you to kind of see, you know, the guy that, that was one of the first to buy in, you know, see that payoff. Well, I think it speaks volumes to his character. Um, you know, it wasn't easy. And, and he had a sensational freshman year. I mean, he was a guy that was, was our go-to guy as a freshman. And, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, his game has evolved. He's become a, a literally a complete player, not just a score, um, you know, to, to, uh, uh, see him here as a, as a, as a senior, having won a big 10 championship, having, um, you know, made it to the NCAA tournament, obviously we would have been in last year, but, uh, you know, it, it's gone a full circle and, um, you know, he's been a, he's been a, a, a very, very stable piece of our process of, of growing this program. And, and uh, you know, he and DeMonte have been huge in that area. They're, they're great character guys, they're great people. And, uh, you know, we've built uh, with them and around them. I mean, maybe, you know, in those first two years, just what were the conversations with him like, or just maybe, you know, it was rough, but like you said, you were trying to build to, you know, what it's eventually become. Well, I, you know, I think, I mean, there was a lot of growing moments. I mean, there was a lot of, you know, he missed some free throws at the end of games we could have won. He had a you know turnover. He hit big shots um, to, to 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 win some games. Um, you know, getting him to buy in on the defensive end, and yet, uh, you know, he's never wavered. He's been he's been on board. He's been about winning from the day he got here, and and he's been bought into our process, and he's worked extremely hard to uh, become the player he is. Thanks, Brad. Hey, uh, Matt from New Jersey, you're up, and then we'll go to Austin from Philadelphia on deck. Thanks, Kev. Hey, Coach Matt Reebok, NJ Hoopers. Uh, what are your expectations for Georgie Bashanishvili uh, during this tournament, and how can he help your team make a deep run and compete for a championship? Well, he was just instrumental in helping us win a championship game in the Big Ten. And, uh, you know, Georgie's the ultimate team guy, uh, you know, a guy that had such a an incredible freshman year, uh, broke our scoring record as a freshman, uh, and and then has been, uh, you know, we yo-yoed him back and forth between the four and the five uh, these last two years with Kofi, uh, but he's a he's a such a high intellect in terms of his basketball IQ, his feel of the game, uh, and, and Georgie's an invaluable piece because he can really score it, and then he's uh, he's he's been a very very solid defender for us as well. Okay, we'll go to Austin and Philadelphia, and then uh, Brandon Simberg on deck. Hey, Brad. Uh, hope you're doing well. So when you look at Drexel and you look at the film on them, what do you see from them on the offensive end as well as the defensive end? A very well-coached team. Um, obviously, uh, they're a team that they, they know exactly what they're trying to get every possession down the court on the offensive side. And uh, uh, they execute extremely well. Uh, I'm, I'm, I've been very impressed with how hard they play. Uh, I think they're a team that, um, even though they start a uh, you know, freshman and a sophomore, that they have a vast amount of knowledge. Uh, their go-to guys are, are, are upperclassmen. So uh, they rebound the ball great. And, uh, you know, they've got all the makings of a team that is, uh, deserves to be here. And, and so I've been, I've been very, very impressed in watching them. And on their offensive end, they can kind of stretch it out, you know, their big guy, James Butler, he's about six, eight. He can knock down a shot. Does that present any challenges for you, especially with having Kofi kind of man the inside? Yeah, it's something we've seen the last two games with uh, our last two games with Luca Garza being a, uh, a three point threat. And then EJ Liddell, um, you know, is a, is a, is a stretch five as well. You know, both those guys, first team, all league guys. So, um, you know, it's, it's very similar. Um, you know, their, their, their point guard is, um, uh, is elite. He does a, he does a great job. He's, uh, you know, you put those two together and, and ball screens and they can cause you some problems. Thanks, Brad. Take care. Thank you. Hey, Brandon, you're up. Alec on deck. Go ahead, Brandon. Hey, Brad, what has what this week like been for you with, the uh, NCAA tournament protocols and things like that? What kind of things have you been doing this it's been past great. week? It's been great. I mean, I, I, it's been not anything really out of the norm from what we've been doing. Um, you know, I think we had the day of the 24 hour quarantine and, and to be honest for us, it was much needed. I mean, it was a, uh, 
uh, three games in three days in the, in the Big Ten tournament. Uh, we were tired. Um, after that, our guys, our guys slept and, and um, you know, get rested their bodies. And, and we did some, uh, uh, some, some just, um, you know, nothing. I mean, watch film and got, got caught up on, on um, our next opponent and uh, watched a little Netflix every now and then. And other than that, it's, it was, it's been great. And then much has been made of the, the food that you guys are eating uh, on the internet. What is your kind of assessment of the food that the NCAA has provided for you so far? It's been great. We haven't had a problem. I mean, ours has been off the, ours been off the chart. Our, 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 you know, like I said, it's been, uh, you know, I haven't had, I, we haven't had any, any, not one of our guys has complained. I mean, we just had an unbelievable hamburger, chicken, salad, pasta, lunch, um, you know, breakfast has been, uh, you know, we usually, we usually have an omelet station at our, at our, at our breakfast. We don't have that, but everything else has been great. I mean, it's been awesome. Thanks, Brad. Okay. Alec, you're up. And then Andre Monroe on deck. Go ahead. Thanks, Kent. Hey, Coach, you've been in the NCAA tournament a few times yourself personally, but of course, some of your players have been. What kind of level of importance is it to have experience on the player's side, but I guess also how do you kind of balance the leadership that you have in your locker room from your seniors with no tournament experience? Yeah, we just, you know, we, we've talked to them. You know, Orlando's been to a few Final Fours, and, and uh, you know, we've got experience. You know, Jen's been to uh, a, a lot, and myself been to a lot, and, and so it I was just talking them through, you know, the game is the game is the game, you know, and, and that's not going to differ. Uh, once we step on that court, you know, it's a, it's a different uniform than what we've seen in the big 10 uh, with a different name on the front, but it's still five guys that are out there trying to beat us and, and we got to go compete. And uh, uh, you know, we've talked about uh, since early January, you know, it, it's, it's uh, you got to win six and you've got to bring it mentally every single day. And if you don't, you go home and, and it's, it's really that simple. You were able to, I guess, overcome some adversity, letting Ohio State come back in the Big Ten Tournament Championship. How beneficial do you think that that kind of experience could be as you head into this national tournament of being able to overcome a run and still be able to get a win? And they're good. Good teams make great runs, uh, especially one that's, you know, top three or four in the country offensively. Uh, you know, I think it, it, it was great that we hung in in the overtime. But our, our, again, we're, we're very connected. Uh, Io DeSumo leads us. I mean, we were laughing and smiling in the timeout uh, huddle right before we started the, the overtime. And our, our guys don't doubt. They don't, they don't, they don't have a question that, uh, that they can win those games. And, uh, uh, you know, that was a high, high level basketball game um, that, um, you know, we hung on and found a way to win. Okay, Andre Monroe, you're up. Joey Wagner on deck. Hey, Coach, your team has been great on defense all season, but how important do you think it will be uh, playing defense uh, to your success in the tournament? It's what the tournament's all about. Great, great defense. Uh, it's what we've been we, – we pride ourselves on. It's what we've been working towards um, really since we, we made the change schematically a year ago is, is figuring out how to win a game when you don't shoot the ball great. And uh, – that happens in postseason play. It happens in the NCAA tournament. I experienced that at SFA. And uh, you got to find a way to win. And you do that with defense and rebounding and, and not turning the ball over. Um, and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, that was instrumental in us winning the, uh, the Ohio State game. Okay. Joey uh, Wagner, Jeremy Warner on deck. Go ahead, Joey. Hey, Brad. It sounds like Tyler has really kind of gotten like a – pseudo internship I guess from the coaching standpoint he said he watched film with Stephen Gentry after the game on Sunday and has spent time with Zach and you know all those guys what what have you seen that kind of opened the door for him obviously that's something he wants to do down the line you know I think he's he's very cerebral I think he understands the game I think he's got a a uh, um, a very advanced mind at his age and, and uh, so, he, you know, he gets it and, and he understands what to look for. He understands uh, the chemistry of a locker room. He understands uh, people's moods and their dynamics and, and the chemistry piece. So, uh, you know, it, and it, it, it was great for him to, to, 
have an opportunity to learn the schematics, learn how to break down film, learn how to put film together, learn how to uh, uh, do scouting reports and video. And, and he's learned all that this year. So it's been, it's been a win-win for, uh, for our team uh, as well as himself. And it sounds like there's like an open baseball field nearby that you guys can spend some time at. I mean, do you plan on doing that? Do you, I mean, have you, now that you've been in the bubble for a little bit, do you, how's that going in terms of? Yeah. Being? I mean, we, we just, we actually just got done taking a picture on a rooftop. Uh, it was so nice to just get a little fresh air, but uh, uh, that'll be all weather pending. It'll be all based on, um, you know, today we had a midday uh, one o'clock uh practice so it, it'll be based around that and the weather and so on and so forth but uh, yeah we will try to get outside in the meantime we've been playing spike ball and throwing a football in our meeting room and and uh uh you know doing some other things so our guys are having a good time thanks brad hey jeremy up soupy on deck hey brad you, you shouted out andres and, and kipper um and obviously there's guys like aaron jordan and, and walk-ons that, that played for you uh, i know they're enjoying this and, and talking to a few of them what what do you want them to take away from from this run that they weren't able to be a part of yeah i mean they're as big a part of it as everybody in there they're just not they're just not because their eligibility ran out they just can't suit up um i wish they could uh and, and just feel feel that emotion and, and feel that energy and um, you know, they, they laid the groundwork and they were a big, big part of it. And, um, I, ca I can't turn back time, but, uh, I can sure let them know that we're thinking about them and, and, uh, very appreciative for all they did. And then you kind of, you kind of talked about this a little bit, but does it feel different when you walk out on an NCAA tournament game and how long does it take to adjust for the players and even the coaches? No, it's, it's different. I mean, when you get on the bus and you've got the police escorts and, and and you're um, you walk out on that court and it, and you you see the the diagram of the court and uh, you know the the outlay of it, it and and you know you're in some place that's that's pretty special not everybody gets to go to so uh, you know I think once the ball's thrown up guys play they 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 hoop and uh, uh, so that'll be uh, uh, a moment they need to understand and realize that they're in a they're in a different environment it's pretty cool and pretty special. But yet, you got to go play the game. Thanks, Brad. Hey, Supo, Supi, you're up, and then Nico. Hey, Coach, can you just talk us through whenever you came here to build a, a coaching staff? How'd you come across Orlando and Chin, and how important was it to get guys that had different recruiting areas? Well, I, you know, I think going back through that, um, you, you know, the one thing that you, you try to do is, is, is find people that for me, that, uh, you enjoy being around every day. And that's really, really important. Uh, I don't want to be around somebody cause they can get me players, but I don't like them. They don't have anything in common with the culture that I'm trying to build or wanted to build. Um, you know, they're, 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 they're married. They've got kids. They're, um, you know, they've, they've been through the battles. Um, you know, Orlando, I've, I've was a, um, uh, I've known Orlando just from the road. Uh, I actually didn't know Chin as well, but, uh, as, as we continue to talk through the process, uh, as I continue to talk to people, uh, he became very, very impressive and, uh, you know, and I wanted different, um, I wanted everybody to be different. I don't want, I don't like ever having like, um, like members of a staff. I want them to be different. I want them to bring something completely different because everybody can specialize in something and be great at it. So uh, that was a big part of that. And, and, you know, Jeff Alexander, and, and I value his, his coaching knowledge and wisdom and, and he's been perfect in his role. And, and uh, so it's been, it's been um, something I took a lot of time on and something that's very important to me and they've, they've been great. Okay, hey, Nico, and then did you, have a, did you have a follow up, John? I'm good. I'm okay. good. Thanks, Coach. Nico, and then David Woods on deck. Go ahead, Nico. Hey, Coach, when Io committed here, this is the exact moment that he wanted to get to. You talk a lot about just the way he's always gone about his business. Now that you guys are in the bubble, getting set to tip off the, uh, the tournament that you've all been waiting a while for, have you noticed any change in his 
demeanor or attitude at all? You know, maybe has it somehow been elevated, even though he's he's kind of always gone about things very professionally. Yeah, I mean, you don't you don't outwardly notice that with Io. I mean, he's he's always very matter of fact, very professional. Um, you know, he's he's uh, I think he's excited. I think he's he's you know, this is it's a young man that would probably be a, a millionaire. You know, had he gone and he and he came back for this moment, and uh, you know that he's 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 going to shine and that, that he's built for this. There's nobody I've been around that's probably more built for. Uh, these opportunities than he is, and yet he doesn't have to burden. He doesn't have to, you know, be the whole load. He can. He's he's got a lot of other good players, and uh, there's no doubt in my mind he'll be he'll be terrific, and he'll be definitely be ready. Okay, David Woods, uh, you're up, and then Shan Ryan on deck. Yes, coach. You mentioned the pieces of this, but uh, what has the day to day been like for you getting to practice? You were. At Farmers Coliseum today, if you had to be in the convention center before, do you get to practice at Farmers Coliseum tomorrow? And and just kind of what the the, the day-to-day has been since you had kind of that rest day on Monday. Yeah, we were in the convention center yesterday, um, mid-afternoon, and uh, we got a two-hour time block over there. Uh, that's set up magnificently. I mean, we were we were shut off. Uh, they have the all the walls up. I mean, great looking court. They had a couple of treadmills, a couple of bikes uh, right by the court. So guys could guys could run uh, if they wanted to. Um, it, I mean, it was um, it was awesome. It was a it was a great practice practice venue because it was very private. Obviously, today we had a uh, we had an hour and a half in in the the Coliseum where we play. Uh, tomorrow we'll be back in the convention center, so we're not in the uh, uh, in the building we play tomorrow and um, but it, it's been good they've got a weight room that uh, is accessible uh, if we choose to use it uh, Adam Fletcher brought brought a lot of our own weights so we've been we've got our weight room set up in our uh, in our meeting room uh, so we, we we haven't had to to utilize that but it is it is it is great looking um, where they've got it set up so teams can continue to lift and 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 do that. So uh, that part of it has been impeccable. Okay, Shannon Ryan, you're up, and then uh, Will, go ahead. And go ahead, Shannon. Yeah, I, I have um, some questions about Andre. It's clear. I mean, you've talked about him a lot, but he just he makes these plays that would probably be just disastrous for a lot of players who to even attempt them. Um, and I'm just wondering, you know, how much of his success or getting to this point was his teammates kind of having this process of guess of um, getting to a point of thinking like, oh my God, this kid can actually make these crazy plays. So I have to adjust or be ready for it and figure out that timing too. I don't know if, if that makes sense. You can kind of talk through that, that process. No, it, it took a while. I mean, there was a lot of drop balls. There were a lot of uh, balls go sailing by people's heads. There were, um, you know, he, he is very unique uh, in his ability to, to deliver passes and, and, and make uh, passes with his body contorted in a lot of different ways and, uh, you know, and off the dribble. Uh, so, you know, I think everybody now has, has pretty much, you know, said when he's got the ball, they better be looking and uh, that it could come at, at, at any point. So he, um, he's very, very blessed that way, Shannon. And, and it took, a, you know, it took a little bit of, of, reckoning and recognizing and feel and all of that for the other guys to say hey you know um i better always be ready so uh we're in a good we're in a pretty good spot with that and that was you know a good part of our turnovers early were were they weren't bad passes we just weren't ready for them and i mean following up on that he says for him he's kind of got to do his do things his way a bit. He's kind of got to learn through the process and learn through trials. So is there an element of freedom and trust you have to have with him, you know, when it comes to coaching him or getting the most out of him, that's maybe different, you know, tailoring your coaching to, to him a little bit. No doubt. There's no question about that. And, and, you know, he, he can make plays that are the right play. And, and that's how I judge things with him. Not if it's, a fancy pass that he throws between a defender's legs or, or, 
it, it's it's more is is it the right play and more often than not he makes the right play and it, it, it might lead to a turnover and really the only time that i've gotten truly upset with him is when it can it, it's it's every time when he goes you know and, and sometimes you gotta you gotta find that medium between being the guy who can go make a play every time and then trusting your offense and and early in the year he got out of that and he tried to make a play every single time as soon as he touched the ball and and he's grown out of that and uh, now he plays within the framework great and yet I know he's he, he, he may turn one over he may turn two over uh, but uh, it's usually because they're, they're the right read and maybe it just didn't work perfect that time. All right, thanks. Okay, Will Graves, you're up. Eddie Pell's on deck. Go ahead, Will. Brad, uh, I appreciate it. I was watching the, the post-game stuff on Sunday and you mentioned several times about the culture that you were trying to build when you got there. For somebody that's not around the program, how would you describe it? And I also noticed a couple of times you mentioned the EIU game and you know, thinking about going from there to, to what you saw on Sunday. As somebody who covered Billy Gillespie at, at UK when they lost to Gardner-Webb the first game and it never got better, I'm just sort of curious, was there early on, was there a like a uh-oh moment in terms of, you know, wondering whether you could get to where you got to on Sunday? Oh, there has been a, you know, I'd be lying if I said there weren't a lot of uh-oh moments. Um, you know, it's, it's not easy. And I, I think that's, you know, it's one of the great things I've, I've, I've had with our administration with Josh Whitman is a guy who understands and has been patient enough to allow me to get our type of guys. And, and I have a saying, character over characters. And, you know, that's why, you know, Io DeSumo fits. That's why uh, Trent Frazier, DeMonte Williams, uh, Zach Griffin, the, you know, a, a guy who's a walk -in. That's why they're still here, because they fit. And they're about work. They're about, we're a development program. I mean, we, we, you know, I don't know if we'll ever have a one and done. We may, I don't know, but we, we, we have guys who get better. We have guys who go live in the weight room like Iodu Sumo and put on 30 pounds. Um, we build relationships over, over, over time and they're honest. And guys that come to our program know I'm going to coach them. I'm also going to love them and hug them and get jumped on in the middle of a game like Curbelo did. And, and that's the, I, I think that's the, the family atmosphere that we talk about, which we have all over our locker room, is we want that, that culture. But I want to be around really good people. And I don't want to be about, around guys. And our staff has done an unbelievable job. And, and does it mean we've turned guys down that are really talented players? Yep, it does. But we, we've fought really hard for what we've had the last two years. And that's a great locker room. And, and that's been the basis of it. And then the basketball stuff, we've molded around that. Okay, Eddie Pels is up, uh, then Mike Berman, and then we'll go Brett Barron. Go ahead, Eddie. Thanks, um, Coach. This is kind of along the same lines. When, when you got there, I, I don't know how you look at things. Did, did you see yourself kind of recruiting, you know, against other Big Ten programs? Were you just recruiting to try to keep your head above water? You know, what kind of players were you looking? Were you look, looking at competing against the big 10 or were you looking to like this, like being a number one seed? I'm, I'm talking at the, no, I, I, I don't care who we recruit against. I, I really don't. If I like somebody and I think he fits what we do, um, you know, I, Andre Felice, great example. I mean, was a junior college player, but he's a winner. And I mean, won a high school championship, he won a, uh, junior college national title. He fit exactly what we were looking for, and we needed a, an experienced player at that time. We, we, we've just looked for the right fits. And uh, hey, if they happen to be recruited by a Big Ten school or a Big 12 school or an SEC, great. You know, so be it. I, I don't ever worry about – I never ask my staff, well, who's recruiting him? I, I don't. I, either I like him and he fits, and, and we like him or he fits, or we, or we move on. And – um, so that's been the primary thing. I think your first year, I think everybody makes a, a, a big mistake in, in trying to evaluate your first recruiting class. The first recruiting class, you fill scholarships. That's all you do. You're, after that, you start recruiting. And because you build relationships and, and, and um, in the recruiting process. So we've tried to do it 
uh, for the most part with, with young high school guys, develop them, get them better, keep them in our program, uh, try to get a little older, which we, we've finally gotten. But uh, it's been all about fit from our university standpoint and, and our program standpoint. When you got there, um, in your mind, what, if anything, did, you know, Illinois basketball mean? I, I guess that was why you got hired, because they, they needed it to mean something. But did you have an inkling of well, what that was? So, so every year, um, at the start of the year, I would ask our team, you know, and, and it, it was one of the first things I did when I got the job, who plays the hardest in the league? Who's the hardest playing team in the league? And they would all say Michigan State. Every, every person to, I mean, just Michigan State, Michigan State. And um, then it was the start of last year before they finally figured out, or at least they figured out what I wanted to hear. They finally said us. And, and we had to start believing in that. We, I, I had no idea what Illinois basketball was going to stand for in terms of what other people thought of us. And we had to project that out somehow. And, um, you know, by a team that plays hard, a team that is, is connected, uh, a team that is, is going to execute. And that's what we've tried to be is a, is a tough minded team that executes and, and is, is really connected uh, and inseparable. Okay, uh, we'll go to uh, Mike Berman and then Brett Behrens. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, Brad, really important question since you mentioned Netflix. What's your go-to or what's been the team's go-to Netflix to kick back and relax since you've been there? Well, I'm actually on, on round number two of Peaky Blinders. So I, I don't know what the guys are watching, but I'm, I, I'm a big fan. I watched it once a couple years ago. Now I'm back on it. All right, I've heard good things. I'll have to check it out. It's good. It's good. Um, you, you, you mentioned the, you've talked since January, that whole idea about, you know, once we get to the tournament, you got, let's, you, you got six games. We want to win all six. And you guys clearly, you know, have, have on that one line, a chance to do it and you've got the talent, but it's, it's, it's not easy to do. And I'm just wondering, how do you approach, you know, now being here at the tournament, talking with the guys about that, that mindset, balancing, wanting it so bad, but also, you know, making sure you take one game at a time and, and doing everything, I guess, the, the best to try and give yourself the best chance to cut down the nets. Yeah, it's literally the, the, the same focus goes on, on the first game as it would the last. Um, and, and we've really simplified it that way. Um, you know, I told our team, uh, everybody, everybody here is good. Everybody here is, is, is worthy of, of being here. And, and they've won games. They know how to win. Um, Drexel knows how to win. They've just won four in a row. They just won their conference tournament, just like we did. And uh, so don't undervalue that. And, and, and then the other thing is they want it just as bad as we do. You know, just be, you know, nobody wants it any more than anybody else. I mean, we're all, we're all trying to fight for something that's uh, uh, only one of us can have. And yet, uh, you know, it, it comes down to effort. It comes down to mental approach. It comes down to toughness. And, and uh, um, you know, and, and, and really it's that simple, taking, th taking things one day at a time and one game at a time. Okay, Brett Barons, you're up, and then we'll uh, go back to uh, Scott Ritchie, and we'll keep asking until or answering any questions until we run out of time here. Brad, you said all year you think Io deserves National Player of the Year. He's named that today by USA Today. I'm curious what it means to you to have a National Player of the Year on your team. Yeah, it's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. I couldn't be happier. Um, you know, I told the team at practice. Um, uh, Derek let us know at practice, and – and. Uh, you know, it's, 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 you, you love seeing good things happen to good people and you love, you love, you know, I, I, I work, I live by the adage, you know, good things happen to those who work hard and, and no one's worked harder than IO. And also along with that, the team success, um, you don't get individual success without the team. Uh, so everybody was fired up when, when I, when I told the team and it was the first IO had heard of it and, um, it's a pretty special moment. Uh, you, you know, there's only one of those two, and uh, there's a lot of people playing basketball, and 
that young man is, um, is is very worthy. He's had a phenomenal, phenomenal year and, and very deserving of that award. I know you talked you know, about how you're going to handle the NCAA tournament, but are, are there things that you remember from Oklahoma State or Stephen F. about the tournament in, in particular that maybe you would file away somewhere that you can go back on now and say, I want to make sure I remember that? I want to make sure that we everybody enjoys it. And because it, it passes so fast, the day, I mean, no, nobody here in our bubble knows what, what day it is. I mean, it, we're, we're just kind of, uh, you know, we move along and there's such a singular focus and, and yet you've got to be able to, to, to understand the little things, uh, to understand, uh, you know, it, it, it's amazing. These most players, their best moments in their life happen in the NCAA tournament. And whether it was eating, St. Elmo's shrimp cocktail and watching the horseradish burn the heck out of people or uh, whether it was watching uh, Kofi put on a, a, a soccer clinic last night in our media room. I mean, all those things are neat and they're unique. And, and guys, I want guys to understand how important that is. The games take care of themselves. Everybody remembers that, but it's, it's all the other stuff you do as a unit and as a team that I want these guys to enjoy and remember. Thanks. Okay, Scott Ritchie, and then we'll David Woods on deck and uh, Shannon Ryan in the hole. Go ahead, Scott. Uh, so was just to check. I think there were seven positives out of about like 6,900 cases in Indy. How are you guys okay? Yeah, they haven't told us otherwise. I didn't know there were seven, so you're ahead of me. Okay, thanks. All right, David Woods, you're up. Shannon Ryan on deck. Hey, Coach, I got to think about this when you talked about recruiting process. Uh, uh, what did you see in, uh, in Luke Goody to, uh, to land him? Not, not too many players out of the state of Indiana end up crossing the border. Well, one, he's smart. Um, nah, I'm just kidding there. But, I, you know, he, he's a uh, – we, we were looking for a big wing. We needed a, a, a young man with size um, and a guy who could really shoot it and stretch the floor. And uh, not only does he do that, he's a really good hard shot maker. Um, and he's not just a step in guy, he can come off screens. Um, and he's been a guy that, that, that fit our, again, just fit perfectly what we're trying to do in terms of his personality, his work ethic. Uh, we think he fits, fits perfect into our culture. Of course, his team was undefeated to the last game, I suppose the winning that helps a lot. That, that probably influenced you too. That helps a lot, and that and that, that's one of the other things that we we set out to do. I mean, everybody on our teams won. We don't we don't have guys from losing programs. Everybody has won, and um, you know, I don't I don't want to, not to say I would never would, but I don't like to take guys from losing programs. Hey, Shannon Ryan, you're up, and then we'll go back and catch up with uh, Joey and Alec. Go ahead, Shannon. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I was just wondering, I think like one of the maybe brightest moments of the Big Ten tournament or most talked about was Georgie and Kofi's uh, post-game presser, which was pretty hilarious. But um, one thing in it that kind of stood out was that, you know, or maybe it got passed over, but they were talked a little about just how they shared in each other's cultures as, you know, guys who live together and teammates. And I know international players, it's nothing new in college basketball, but um, I'm just wondering, you know, you do have a lot of guys from different countries and they seem to really embrace that. And um, what have you learned about Georgia and Jamaica and, um, and Puerto Rico and all kinds of places? Um, but, and I don't know, can that be an example to people as well? Oh, I don't think there's any doubt. I, that's one of the beautiful things about uh, the connectivity of our team, you know, and, and whether it was, um, Georgie knows I enjoy a glass of wine. And, and, and he calls it grape juice. And yet uh, a year ago, he brings, he brings me back a bottle of wine uh, from, from Georgia. And, uh, you know, and, and Curbelo runs around here all the time with his, with his uh, a Puerto Rican shirt on. And you could see how proud they are. And, and uh, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, and Kofi from Jamaica, and, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, Kofi's an unbelievable cook. He loves to cook Jamaican dishes for guys on the team. And, and uh, you know, it, it's, it's really interesting. It's really fun to hear those guys uh, talk and interact and, 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 and talk with each other about whether it's the food they eat or what they do on a Friday night. You know, it, it's, 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 it's fun to, to, to learn a lot about those different, uh, different places of the world that, 
guys from the states don't know anything about. Okay, we got time for just one more question uh, before Trent. Trent's route ready. Joey, we'll go ahead and use and uh, let you wrap it up. Hey, Brad, I wanted to follow one more thing about Tyler. I, I think we've talked before, like in a normal coaching carousel, he probably is a, a GA spot maybe somewhere else right now. And like this is a pretty unique opportunity for him to be a player, but also look behind the curtain a little bit into this coaching world and work with some of those guys. How beneficial is that to him? Because this obviously doesn't happen to a lot of people. Yeah, he get, he gets the best of both worlds. And, uh, you know, I really challenged him at the start of the year to, to learn the profession. Not just, you you know the game, you get to play it, you get to see it every day, but but you've got to learn the profession and, and you've got to learn, you know, you've got to find out if, if okay, as soon as the game's over and, you're, and, you're, and your buddies uh, go do something or go eat or whatever it is, you know, and it's been different this year, you got to go cut tape and you got to go grade, help grade it out. And you need to learn how to do that. And you need to see if you like that. And if you can adapt to the grind of, of, of this profession and uh, you know, he's done, he's done yeoman's work with it and he's, he's fun. I, I, I pick his brain a lot just to see how he's thinking. It doesn't, it might not be relevant to anything that is, is up and coming, but it, I, I want to see how he's, how he's thinking, what he's thinking about, what he's, what he sees in a practice or, or whatever the situation is, but he's uh he, he's been very fortunate this year with that.